welcome to Science Monitor, your favorite weekly program on science and technology. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Let us begin by taking a look at the highlights. India creates a historical milestone. Mangalyaan successfully inserted into the Martian orbit. India becomes the first Asian country to enter the orbit of the Red Planet. Gravity assist technique used to reach Mars. NASA's MAVEN also reaches Mars. The names of winners of the prestigious Shanti Swaroop Bhatnagar Award for 2014 announced. And in today's In Focus, we will learn more about all the successful ventures to Mars till now. And now news and details, 24th of September proved to be a historical day as India's ambitious Mars Orbiter mission successfully reached its destination and entered the Martian orbit. This is the first time that a nation has succeeded in reaching Mars in its maiden attempt and with this, India became the first Asian nation to reach the Red Planet. We present you a report. Creating a historical milestone in the field of space science, India's Mars Orbiter mission on 24th September successfully reached its destination. While the world eagerly awaited, scientists of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, successfully performed the reverse maneuver procedure and inserted its spacecraft Mangalyaan into Martian orbit around 8 a.m. on Wednesday, 24th September. India has thus become the first nation to have succeeded in inserting a spacecraft into the Martian orbit in its maiden attempt. With this, India has also become the first Asian country to reach the red planet sphere. The spacecraft was 420 kilometers from the Martian surface and 215 million kilometers away from the Earth when it was inserted into the elliptical orbit. Mangalyaan will rotate around the planet in a duration equivalent to 3.2 Earth's days. Mars Orbiter spacecraft, more commonly known as the Mangalyaan, is India's first interplanetary probe launched by ISRO on 5th November 2013 with a budget outlay of 450 crore rupees, that is $74 million. Based on indigenous technology, this is the lowest budget compared to missions of other space agencies. For example, NASA's MAVEN, which reached Mars on September 21st, was built at a cost of $617 million. The spacecraft Mangalyaan, which weighs 475 kilograms, was launched on board a polar rocket from the spaceport Sriharikota off the Bay of Bengal, about 80 kilometers northeast of Chennai. The mission, called the Mars Orbiter Mission MOM in short, aims to explore the Mars surface features, morphology, meteorology and atmosphere using indigenous scientific instruments, along with studying deep space navigation and communication. The propulsion system of Mangalyaan consists of a liquid fuel engine of 440 newton thrust and eight 22 newton thrusters that were designed to help insertion in Martian orbit along with controlling attitude and orientation. Mangalyaan also carries five scientific payloads with instruments that will be used to study the geology of Mars and the possibility of life on this planet. ISRO's telemetry, tracking and command network in Bengaluru have been continuously monitoring Mangalyaan since its launch. During the long voyage, the course of the spacecraft was corrected twice through a complex process called trajectory correction maneuver. This was carried out once on December 11, 2013, soon after the spacecraft crossed the sphere of influence of the Earth, and then again on 12 June 2014. On the 22nd of September, scientists did a course correction procedure on the spacecraft to simulate the Mars orbit insertion maneuver that took place on 24 September. The insertion operation began at 4.17 a.m. on 24 September by first activating the spacecraft's three antennas for receiving and transmitting signals between Earth and Mars. At 6.56 a.m., the spacecraft was rotated towards Mars and five minutes later, when sunlight was not falling on the Martian surface, causing eclipse, the thrusters beneath the engine were given the orbiter altitude control. At 7.17 a.m., the most crucial moment in the mission, the 440 Newton liquid apogee motor was fired to adjust the spacecraft's momentum to allow it to enter the orbit of Mars. The speed of the spacecraft was reduced to 2.1 meters per second from 22.2 kilometers per second for enabling a smooth transition into the Martian orbit from the Sun's orbit. Mangalyaan has started sending its first high-quality images of the red planet. The data gathered by MOM using five solar-powered instruments will help determine how Martian weather systems work and what happened to the water that is believed to have once existed on Mars in large quantities. 
The spacecraft is expected to circle the planet for at least six months, following an elliptical orbit that gets within 365 kilometers of the planet's surface at its closest and 80,000 kilometers at its farthest. This indeed is a proud moment for the nation as half the world's previous attempts, 23 out of 41 Mars missions have failed, including attempts by Japan in 1999 and China in 2011. The success of Mangalyaan is the result of the scientific acumen and persistent hard work of a large group of researchers. Mangalyaan was inserted into the Martian orbit after a successful 300-day voyage covering 666 million kilometers in space. The voyage has been unique. How and following what principles did the spacecraft cover such a long journey? We will see in this report. As we hail the success of the Mars Orbiter mission, fondly called MOM, it has been a sleepless, persevering 18 months for the scientists of ISRO. We have to today but admit that the success of Mangalyan is the result of the scientific acumen and tireless hard work of a large group of researchers. Mangalyan was inserted into the Martian orbit after a successful 300-day voyage covering 666 million kilometers in space. It is also a matter of great pride that in order to hold the cost of the mission down, India has completely relied on innovative indigenous technologies. The success of MOM is based on many scientific principles. The available technology and equipments were innovatively tweaked and recycled to overcome cost and technology constraints. ISRO also used a small size payload weighing only 15 kilograms and saved on fuel by using a smaller rocket to put its spacecraft into the Earth orbit first to gain enough momentum to slingshot it towards Mars. Mangalyan has been strategically positioned in the Martian orbit using a unique technique called Gravity Assist technology. Gravity Assist technology, also known as Gravitational Slingshot or Swing By, is a technique in aerospace engineering that involves the use of relative movement, that is, orbit around a central object along with gravity of a planet or other astronomical object to alter the path and speed of a spacecraft. The path of a spacecraft can be directed or redirected along with increasing or decreasing its speed based on the gravitational pull exerted by the celestial body on it. This is usually done to save fuel, time and expense. Based on this technology, Mangalyan was launched on board a polar rocket from the spaceport Sriharikota off the Bay of Bengal, about 80 kilometers northeast of Chennai. The probe was first put in an elliptical path around the Earth in order to gain enough momentum. Once the probe completed six orbits around the Earth, as on the 1st of December 2013, the rockets of the probe were fired. This provided the thrust required to put the probe in the departure trajectory around the Sun to carry it towards Mars. During the long voyage, the course of the spacecraft was corrected twice through a complex process called trajectory correction maneuver. This was carried out once on December 11, 2013, soon after the spacecraft crossed the sphere of influence of the Earth, and then again on 12 June 2014. On the 22nd of September, scientists did a course correction procedure on the spacecraft to simulate the Mars orbit insertion maneuver that took place on 24th September. The spacecraft traveled for 300 days covering 666 million kilometers in space in a path around the Sun to reach Mars. On arriving at Mars, ISRO scientists first reoriented the spacecraft. The complex procedures for insertion of Mangalyan into Martian orbit started as early as 4.17 a.m. on 24th September by first activating the spacecraft's three antennas for receiving and transmitting signals between the Earth and Mars. At 6.56 a.m., the spacecraft was rotated towards Mars and five minutes later, when sunlight was not falling on the Martian surface causing eclipse, the thrusters beneath the engine were given the orbiter altitude control. While the Earth's gravity was used to provide momentum to the probe, the speed of the probe had to be reduced in order to position it in the Martian orbit in accordance with the gravitational pull of Mars. This was achieved by firing the liquid apogee motor that adjusted the spacecraft's momentum to allow it to enter the orbit of Mars. Because of the Mars-Sun-Earth geometry, 
the orbit insertion could only happen when the probe was on the other side, that is, the eclipse zone. Mom entered the eclipse five minutes before the engine was fired. Exactly at 7.17 a.m., the motor was fired for 24 minutes, reducing the velocity of the spacecraft by 4.2 kilometers per second in relation to Mars. The speed of the spacecraft was reduced to 2.14 meters per second from 22.2 kilometers per second for enabling smooth transition into the Martian orbit from the Sun's orbit. There was a short break in the radio link between the Earth station and MOM as Mars blocked the communication and MOM executed all operations autonomously. At 7.45 a.m. the procedure ended and Mangalyaan, having achieved the braking velocity, was placed in an orbit around Mars. Two minutes after, the communication with the spacecraft resumed and it was reoriented to point its antenna towards the Earth to transmit data. Before Mangalyaan entered the orbit of Mars, NASA's MAVEN had also reached Mars last Sunday. Now, MAVEN has been strategically positioned in the Martian orbit so as to orbit the planet in 35 hours. While India's mission to Mars successfully reached the Red Planet and Mangalyaan was inserted into the Martian orbit, NASA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution mission, shortly known as MAVEN, also reached Mars on 21st September 2014. The MAVEN spacecraft fired its main engines for 33 minutes and 26 seconds in order to slow down the spacecraft enough to be captured into Mars orbit at 9.50 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on 21st September. MAVEN was inserted into an elliptical orbit 6,200 km by 150 km above the Martian surface. Dr. Bruce Yakoski of the University of Colorado, Boulder, is the principal investigator for MAVEN. MAVEN was successfully launched aboard an Atlas V launch vehicle on November 18, 2013. The spacecraft has travelled roughly for 10 months and covered 442 million miles. MAVEN is devoted to observing the upper atmosphere of Mars and how it interacts with the Sun and the solar wind. Unlike Mangalyaan or previous Mars missions by NASA, MAVEN doesn't have camera, but it has an advanced IUVS system that is designed to make measurements of the composition, structure and escape of atmospheric gases from the Martian atmosphere. IUVS has special ultraviolet eyes that can detect emissions from molecules and ions that are common components of Mars air, map the distribution and abundance of gases like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, hydrogen and isotopes. September was celebrated as the Foundation Day of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. On this occasion, the names of winners of the prestigious Shanti Swaroop Bhatnagar Award for the year 2014 were declared. Shanti Swaroop Bhatnagar Awards are given to Indian researchers below the age of 45 years for their outstanding contributions to science and technology. The prize includes a citation, a plug and a cash award of 5 lakh rupees. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR celebrated its 72nd foundation on 26th of September. Established in 1942 as an autonomous body under the Department of Science and Technology as an outcome of the vision of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Dr. Shanti Swaroop Patnagar, CSIR is today India's largest R&D organization. On this occasion, the names of the winners of the prestigious Shanti Swaroop Patnagar Prize for the year 2014 were also announced. According to the announcement made during the celebrations at the CSIR National Physics Laboratory, New Delhi, 10 scientists from seven different disciplines have been selected for Shanti Swaroop Patnagar Prize for Science and Technology for this year. This includes Dr. Roop Malik from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research for Biological Sciences, Dr. Sachida Nand Tripathi from IIT Kanpur for Earth, Atmosphere, Ocean and Planetary Sciences, Dr. Kaushal Kumar Verma, Indian Institute of Science for Mathematical Sciences, and Dr. Anurag Agarwal from CSIR Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology for Medical Sciences. 
The SSB Prize for Chemical Sciences has been jointly given to Dr. Kavira Yani Ramakrishna Prasad of Indian Institute of Science and Dr. Sovik Mehdi of CSIR Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. While the SSB Prize in Engineering Sciences was shared by Dr. S. Venkata Mohan of CSIR Indian Institute of Chemical Technology and Dr. Soman Chakrabadi of IIT Mumbai. The Shanti Swaroop Bhatnagar Prize is being awarded by CSIR since 1958. The prize is given to Indian scientists below the age of 45 for their outstanding scientific work in India. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back after the break, you're watching Science Monitor. With India's Mars Orbiter mission successfully inserting the Mangalyaan into the orbit of Mars this week, India has created history by becoming the first Asian nation to reach Mars. However, countries like USA, Russia and European Union have previously taken up Mars missions. In today's In Focus, we will learn more about all the successful ventures to Mars till now. Whether man will have a new boat outside the Earth has been a question fascinating space scientists for long. And this is what the journey to Mars and its exploration have been all about. All the missions to the Red Planet have been designed to find signs of life in the past, present and the possibilities for the future. The two latest efforts, India's Mangalyaan and the USA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Mission, or MAVEN, aim to do exactly this. The two will study the red planet's atmosphere. The Indian Mars Orbiter mission on Mangalyaan also aims to search for methane, the organic compound which may be an indicator of life. While NASA's MAVEN will explore particularly the planet's upper atmosphere. However, the journey to Mars has not been smooth. Mars has posed challenges to its explorers. Roughly two-thirds of all spacecraft destined for Mars have failed. Since 1960, there have been 51 global missions to Mars. The US and the erstwhile USSR had failed in their maiden attempts. The first Chinese mission to Mars, called Yingyo-1, failed in 2011, along with the Russian Phobos Grunt mission, with which it was launched. Earlier in 1998, the Japanese mission to Mars ran out of fuel and was lost, while in 2003, its Nozomi spacecraft failed to cruise. Space scientists are keen to find signs of life on Mars. Information gathered from various scientific missions to Mars suggests that about 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago, Mars and Earth were much more similar. Mars may have been much warmer and better then. These are the ancient conditions when first evidence of microbial life appeared on Earth. The question confronting scientists is whether Mars also saw microbial life during that period and whether it is present still somewhere in the unexplored planet. Even if there is no life on Mars, scientists are interested in exploring whether humans can travel there and become the life themselves. Because water is the key to life, earlier Mars missions, Mars Odyssey, Mars Exploration Rovers, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and Mars Phoenix Lander were designed to make discoveries related to evidence of water. However, the robot spacecraft in the 1960s the US Mariner 4 in 1964 and Mariner 6 and 7 in 1969 reveal Mars as barren without any sign of life or civilization. In 1971, Mariner 9 orbited Mars, mapping about 80% of the planet and discovering its volcanoes and canyons. NASA's Viking 1 lander touched down on the surface of Mars in 1976, the first successful landing onto the red planet. It took the first close-up pictures of the Martian surface, but still found no strong evidence of life. But since 1996, Mars exploration underwent a sea change, as data from four orbiters and four landed missions indicated Mars to be having a complex geologic history. In 2002, NASA's Mars Odyssey orbiter detected hydrogen-rich polar deposits, indicating large quantities of water ice close to the surface. 
Hydrogen was found in other areas as well in later observations. In 2004, Mars Exploration Rover Opportunity found structures and minerals indicating liquid water once existed at its landing site. Another mission, the Spirit, also found the signature of ancient water near its landing site. Among the various discoveries about Mars, the possible presence of liquid water on Mars has excited the world the most. This is because everywhere one finds water on Earth, one finds life. In 2008, NASA's Phoenix Mars Lander, the first mission to touch water right in the Martian Arctic, observed snow falling from clouds. While erstwhile USSR has quite a robust Mars program, Russian space program has suffered from financial crunch. Besides the US and the erstwhile USSR, Europe has significant presence in exploring Mars. The European Space Agency's Mars Express and Beagle 2 were able to orbit round Mars, though they failed to land in 2003. However, its Rosetta spacecraft successfully flew by Mars in 2007. An interesting Mars mission is underway with partnership amongst NASA, the European Space Agency and Russia. The ExoMars mission stated for launch in 2016 and visages a large Mars orbiter. The spacecraft will serve as a data relay station for a life-searching rover which will go to Mars in 2018. The mission also aims to bring samples of Mars soil back to the Earth. And what are the contributions of science to this week's history? We shall learn in our next segment from the pages of history. On 28th September 1895, noted French chemist Louis Pasteur passed away. He had found the role of bacteria in the process of fermentation and also that microbes do not germinate on non-living matter. This gave birth to the germ theory of infection. The process found by Louis Pasteur of heating liquids at a specific temperature to kill the harmful microbes is called pasteurization. On 30th September 1870, the renowned French physicist Jean-Baptiste Perrin was born, who studied the Brownian motion of the minute particles in fluids and proved Albert Einstein's theory in this regard. Using Gambog emulsion, Perrin also fixed the Avogadro constant. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in the year 1926. On 2nd October 1852, the famous Scottish chemist Sir William Ramsay was born. Sir Ramsay discovered inert gases, neon, krypton and xenon. He was the co-discoverer of argon, radon, calcium and barium. In recognition of his services for the discovery of inert gaseous elements in air and their placement in the periodic table, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1904. On 4th October 1957, the then USSR sent its first man-made satellite Sputnik 1 into space and this marked the beginning of the space age. Sputnik 1 weighed 83.6 kilograms. Its apogee in the orbit of the Earth was 947 kilometers and the perigee was 230 kilometers. Sputnik 1 did one complete revolution of the Earth in 96 minutes and was commissioned in space till 1958. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. CSIR, Open Source Drug Discovery, in collaboration with Vigyan Prasad, is conducting a Hindi essay competition on Malaria, Ek Chunauti Evam Navivaran Ke Pai. The contest is open to all school students from class 8 to class 10 and is an opportunity to win attractive prizes. The last date for submissions of the certified essays is 31st October 2014. Students who are interested in participating in the contest can know more about the contest and rules by visiting www.osdd.net or www.vigyanprasar.gov.in. The large-scale project Swachh Bharat Mission for Urban Areas, aiming at cleaner India, has been accorded approval. 
The program to be implemented over the next five years is to start from the 2nd of October 2014 in all 4,041 statutory towns covering 1.04 crore households. The program will focus on creating awareness regarding sanitation, eradication of manual scavenging, municipal solid waste management. The program aims to provide 2.5 lakh seats of community toilets, 2.6 lakh seats of public toilets and solid waste management facility for all towns with a budget outlay of 62,009 crore rupees over five years. India will participate in the upcoming project on building the 30-meter telescope TMT at Monarchia, Hawaii. The TMT is to be constructed by an international consortium consisting of institutions from the USA, Canada, Japan, India and China. From the Indian side, this will be a joint project for the Department of Space and Technology DST, and the Department of Atomic Energy DAE. With its contributions, India will be a 10% partner in the project and this will enable Indian scientists to access a state-of-the-art telescope to answer some of the most fundamental questions in modern science. ESSO, National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennai, has recently published a wave atlas for the Indian coast. The atlas compiles analysis of statistics derived from simulated wave data from the Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea. The atlas that has been made available in the public domain will act as a reference for basic wave-related information including design wave height, wave approach, period, etc. and will help in planning activities like design of marine structures, beach protection and environmental protection. In a major step towards lowering the national cancer burden by generating awareness, it has been declared that henceforth, November 7th will be observed all over the country as National Cancer Awareness Day. The announcement was made by Dr. Harshvardhan while speaking at a function organized by the Regional Cancer Center in Thiruvananthapura. In this context, the Kerala government's proposal of a novel Suhurtam scheme for making cancer treatment free in district and medical college hospitals and setting up of a national cancer centre in the state on a new 15-acre campus has received wide positive response. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at vigyanprasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. That is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned. Bye-bye.